Like up in the pen, he a rat If he told once, he'd do it again Shorty said she love you, shorty know how to pretend She just trying to survive, you a mean Yo, shout it out, fresh out It's the king so rich, everything so rich So rich in health, so rich in love Right now, we so rich in opportunity Because we got the chance to build with this brother AP, right? Yeah. On fresh out So look, man, let's get straight into it, man Because, like, we on the East Coast And some of our viewers may not really know um, about certain places, right? Like the Velt, right? Like Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. So like for you, what was life like growing up in Roosevelt, right? Like you touched on it earlier. Like what was it like growing up in the Velt and how were things leading up like to your arrest? Mm. So we got to be going back late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. Roosevelt. And um, I was born in 1988. You know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of kids that grew up in this town, parents could have been drugs, but listen, Roosevelt, listen, we, it's not like they compare it to different boroughs. It's not like that, you know, we houses, but it can get a little messy too. And um, especially at this time. So you had the Crips coming up, you know what I'm saying, in my neighborhood. And um, one square mile, we got like one main road, literally in that in, in that town, bro. So just imagine if it's really hectic, one main road, somebody's gonna meet up eventually, it's gonna be nasty, shots, whatever. And um, so this is the time I'm growing up. And um, so now I gotta be like in seventh grade and we gotta worry about, we like to go to Park Avenue store, you know what I'm saying? Get our little snacks, breakfast sandwich on the way. and. Um, we gotta worry about some older niggas fucking with us or trying to rob us or because this is what was going on. You know what I'm saying? The, the bullying or not so much that, but it was a gang. So, you know, this is what they do. Territorial. Also. It's territorial, very territorial. And um, so for me, man, you know, listen, I liked money at the time, the nice cars, you know. Dudes are selling crack at the time, heroin, and um, you know, weed. And this is the things that was enticing me. You know what I'm saying? This is the life. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was good at home. I had both my parents. You know what I'm saying? Had my mom and my dad, and they did the best they could. You know what I'm saying? I got brothers that was a little bit of age gap between me and my brothers, between me and my oldest brother, it's like 15 years, and the brother above me, it's like eight years, so I pretty much was coming up by myself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, so I had a, a, a close friend that I got close with at a young age, his name is Mike, and you know him too. He's like my brother, you know what I'm saying? And um, he was literally my brother, we walked to school together, blah, blah, blah. and um, he lived in Roosevelt at the time, Graduating elementary school, he went on to Freeport. He went to die. I'm going into the junior high. Roosevelt High School at the time was crazy. It was like compared to Nassau County jail. Like you had to know how to fight. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't be soft. You know what I'm saying? And um, so this is what I'm going into. I'm going into it by myself, man. And um, I had some dudes that I was close with and um, you know, Shit, pick a side. If these dudes is fucking with us every day, obviously they are enemy. So if they crib, we might as well be blood. You know what I'm saying? So this is the flag that I picked up. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm going to be honest. I used to love that shit, bro. Turn blood probably 2003. You know what I'm saying? And um, I graduated high school, bro. You know what's crazy? I was big in sports all through high school. That's probably the only thing that kept me in school at the time because... Mm -hmm. It was a lot going on, you know, in my house or whatever, but um, I stuck with sports and my senior year in high school, I'm 17, I get arrested. I catch a robbery charge. And by the way, I never robbed somebody after that. I, I decided right then and there, <laughs> this is not gonna be my forte. I'm not gonna be, you know, I like to make money. So it kind of messed it up going into that football season, right? Okay. And, um, my coach didn't know if I was going to be around. I ended up not starting. I was supposed to be the starting quarterback, bro. And listen, when shit didn't work out, I graduated high school. 
I was a little depressed, man. And, I, mm -hmm. you know, nobody could tell, but that upset me because I wanted to make something with the sports. But it didn't work out that way. You know, so now I'm left in the hood. I feel like I don't have to make options. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'm hustling. I'm doing a little bit of this. I can't really hold on to a job. You know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of dudes died. I'm not going to, you know, really go into names, but a lot of dudes from my era died, which, and I'm sure you can relate Rest to. Rest in peace to them. Yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace to them, you know. And um, I made it through, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, like I said, my forte, my forte, I used to love my gang. I used to love my comrades. You know what I'm saying? But even with all that, Rich, I was still trying to find myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't feel like, okay, this is it. Like, I kind of psyched myself out thinking, okay, this is what it is. I'm blood. You know what I'm saying? Whoever got anything else to say other than that. It's going to be repercussions. It was literally like that. But I ain't feel like I was complete with myself. Like, I still felt a little empty. Even in, the, even in the company of my comrades, you know what I'm saying, the homies, I just felt like, damn, this shit ain't really, you know, but I kept thugging. This is what it is. So let me ask you, at that time, right, it's talking early 2000s, coming up, being blood in Roosevelt, what was that like? Like you said, dudes... A lot of dudes was dying, a few dudes was dying. What was that like, like, growing up? One square mile. One square mile. Yeah, for you. I mean, it can be rough, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it can be rough, man. Anxiety builds in, paranoia, all of that. We humans, so we deal with all of these, you know, um, emotions or whatever, but if, you know, some dudes was in more than others. You know what I'm saying? I got to a point, the, the, the longer I stayed, the deeper I got in to mess in the street. You know what I'm saying? But um, for some dudes, bro, it literally was if you get caught on a certain block at the wrong time and you ain't got your gun, that could be your night. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, I'm, not, I'm at this time... Dudes is walking, we on foot, you know what I'm saying? But still, cars is driving by. It could be at nighttime, a car drive by. I'm, you don't know who this is. Like, it was like that. So, you know, they talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, a lot of stuff that we endure in the hood and we experience in the hood, Rich. You know what I'm saying? As far as um, you getting robbed or you robbing somebody, you getting shot at. You gonna tell me this don't uh, breed or this is not breeding ground for post-traumatic stress disorder. And I think mm. I was dealing with this. Mm. I'm not officially diagnosed or nothing, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And um, it was a lot, bro. It was a lot, man. You know, coming from school, the fighting every day, you know what I'm saying? The BCOP, you know what I'm saying? The brawls going on, everything. It was crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, in retrospect, it was a waste of time. I wish I would have uh, applied my energy and, and channel my energy and other things, you know. But um, you know, a lot of people didn't make it. R.I.P. to them. And I made it through. I'm still around, you know. But um, we here, man. Our, our whole mindset is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of things I don't really worry about. But um, yeah, it, it was it, it it was tough, bro. It was tough. Roosevelt was tough. So, so let me ask you, like, you're an entrepreneur now. You're yeah. the business. Yeah. Your own business. Yeah. That you started from the scratch, built up. So, like, how was that transition for you? Not even to the business yet, but, like, going from what you was going, like, being in the streets, banging, dugging it out, 21, catching attempt, murder, eight-year sentence, gift and a curse, right? It's a curse for who want to do eight years. It's a blessing because it could have been much worse. Now, now you in a, you in prison. So how did everything that you was dealing with in the streets transfer over to prison, right? And eventually you fell back. You stop. You you stop banging, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how did like how did that transition occur for you? Um. <clears throat> well, I fell back when I was locked up. I was in the county and um. A lady at the time, my ex-wife, you know what I'm saying? At this time, she was 
holding me down while I'm doing this bid. And um, I have feelings for her, and I knew that. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Camera turns on? Yeah, yeah. So we can start that over, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can just start from there. You can start from there. Sometimes I'll be forgetting what I'm going to say, bro. That happens to you sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the temperature's too hot. All right, yeah, so just use that one for, for now. Temperature's too hot? Yeah, it's too hot. What? Yeah, just just, just keep talking to this one then, for now. That's crazy. Uh, All right, yeah, so just you can uh, go. Angle, angling good, though? Yeah, it's, it's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like, yeah, go ahead, you can pick it up. Nah, so I was asking you, like, what was that transition like from being out here in the streets, it's lit, banging, going crazy, to murder, eight joints, now you get locked up. And I know you said that you fell back, so, like, how, how, how did that transition happen for you? I had to really realize in prison what was my downfall? Mm, like I, had to, I, 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 I literally had to have a dear self conversation. Like, listen, Aaron, you're sitting in this cell. Some things got to be figured out and evaluated in your life. Let's start from top to bottom. What's the most problematic thing in your life right now? And the most problematic thing in my life, I, you know, I created this. I'm not, no excuses. My affiliation, I had to let that go. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I, um, my ex-wife mm -hmm. at the time, this is before we got married, she mm -hmm. holding me down. I wanted these conjugal visits. I knew I had a lot of time. And I said, you know, I'm going to marry her. And um, I'm going to fall back because this, listen, the opposite of peace is chaos, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you alleviate all the chaotic things out of your life, bro, a little peace will start to trickle in. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, that was probably one of the best decisions that I made was falling back and just doing my own thing as a man, you know. So um, all of these now transitioning from the penitentiary to the streets, all of these characteristics was already in me. You know what I'm saying? As it's built in, it's in my genes, in my DNA as far as my ambition, my skill, my work ethic, you know what I'm saying, my, um, my manners, etiquette, all of that is built in me. It was just, like I said, channeled in the wrong direction. In the wrong direction. So it wasn't hard. It was just cutting the fat off the state. And prison helped with that. Because being in prison, man, you know, you're being locked away from people. You get to see all of these people, men, women, boys, girls, if they're reaching out to you. Or if they're not. I didn't have a lot of people reaching out to me. I had my support circle. Mm -hmm. I had my... And this is who I keep close to me to this day. day. So it wasn't hard. Coming home, being cool. Not because I never heard from you. <laughs> I ain't heard from you in five years. You can't really love me. So the transition wasn't hard, bro. It wasn't. It was just what I think, you know, I did what a lot of people need to do with themselves sometimes is put people and things in their proper perspective in their life if you really want something out of life. And I really wanted something out of life. And that's why I'm going for it now. This is where this comes from, mm -hmm. Rich, you know? Absolutely. This is why we go hard every day. No, absolutely, man. No, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you expressing that because, listen, man, life is real. And, you know, sometimes we got to make choices, whatever those choices are, mm -hmm. whatever we feel are the best choices um, at the time to take our life in a positive direction, right, while still maintaining our morals and our values and our principles. That takes a lot of um, courage, right, to make certain decisions, to make a decision like that you made, right, for your life, right. to take it in that next step and all that, man. And a lot of times, listen, man, I want to, like, I always like to shout out the people, I always like to shout out the youth, shout out the young people, man. If you could give some advice to the young people out there listening, right, the young kings, the young queens, growing up in the veld, all these other places all around the U.S. that's like the veld, um... You know, even preparing himself for prison. Because when I was in the field, like, prison was a part of it. Mentally, I already knew, like, yo, I might go to the bing. I'm I could sure. go to the bing at any time. Right. And I'm ready for it. I went to jail, came home, like, yo, I got another bit in me. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. Like, I literally, I, I remember. But see, that's the hmm? sickness. That's the sickness, hmm. Rich. 
Absolutely. You know, having such a love and a gravitation for a lifestyle and you know that it's hurting you at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or the consequences can hurt you detrimentally and your family. It's a sickness, bro. I look, I've been in bullpens with dude in a bullpen. This is where we sit in, if you're waiting for court or something like that. And dudes is like, yo, oh, they're going to offer me five? I'm going to take that five. And, they, you know, it's like, this is what we're doing. It, he comfortable with that. And not considering the time. Now, granted, listen, if the crime fits, the, if it works out for you, you know, that's something different. But it's a sickness as far as the things that we gravitate to, bro. And we know that the repercussions is going to hurt us. Yeah, I, I, no, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. But it's like, yo, like sometimes, and I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit, or rather I'm going to look at it from a different perspective, like because sitting here now, after everything that I've been through, of course I agree with you wholeheartedly, but it's like, yo, like, sometimes it's not a lot of options there. It's not a lot of opportunities there, right? Like, so at the end of the day, like, your gang, your team, like, 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 the, the people that you grew up with, like, at the end of the day, gangs are just a natural formation to system failure. Mm -hmm. Whether it's small gangs or big gangs, they're natural formation of the failures of the system that a lot of times don't give, excuse my language, a fuck about us. Right? So if that team, if that group of brothers, or that group of brothers and sisters, they provide in that family like feeling, right? No matter how dysfunctional it may be moving forward, mm -hmm. they're providing that. So like I heard you, like uh, 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 something that I heard you constantly mention throughout the interview was like, yo, you were selling crack. You like to get money. You were selling crack. That's what you saw. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw crack. I saw crack, dope, weed, right? So at the end of the day, if individuals putting you in position to get a job, Right? It's not an official job, but they're putting you in a position to put money in your pocket. Right? When nobody else is putting you in that position. Right? You got skills, you eager, you ready to make a dollar, you ready to make your way to that car. Ain't nobody putting you in position. Right? The people that you see in position at that time from your neighborhood, when you come outside those doors, I go to the store, I see a dude out here trapped. I might not, I might not know too much about it. Right? So that's why I feel like, you know, I, I try to do my part, try to go out there, build with the young kings, build with the young kings. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, try to provide these opportunities, man, that the system ain't providing, man. We got to provide. So, you know, like, it's a little building all that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, listen, if I had one thing to tell the kids, man, it would be, there's nobody else like you. You build like yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin and don't worry about what nobody said. There's so many avenues, there's so many skills out here to learn and develop and take you to the next level to where you're securing your future out here, mm -hmm. you know, but um, time's a little different. You got the social media, and certain images are being portrayed. It's tough for the kid, you know what I'm saying? It was tough for us, Absolutely. you know, but um, just be comfortable with yourself. I mean, you know, a lot of these kids are not really comfortable they self and take the time to get to know yourself it's alright to be alone you know that was probably the best thing for me Rich in, in prison in prison it's being alone forced to being alone forced to getting to know yourself you know your likes your dislikes your beliefs you know what I'm saying your perspective on life all of that developed in that cell bro mm. you know what I'm saying I did the most reading I ever did in the cell in themselves yeah so spend time with yourself you know no, absolutely, man. So let me ask you. Um, I know you've been through a few different jails. What jail had the most profound impact on you? Mm -hmm. Right? So first off, tell us about the different spots that you've been through throughout the New York State prison system. Mm -hmm. Right? And then tell us, and then answer that question for me. Yeah, I've been through um, Auburn Correctional Facility, um, Green Haven, Upstate Box, Five Points, Marcy, uh, Woodburn, mm -hmm. and that's about it. Probably Ulster and Transfer. Okay. Like know. full matches, two mediums. Yeah. That's a lot of penitentiary. Yeah. So which experience had the most, or which experiences had the most profound impact on you? Mm. And why? 
Well, for one, I'm going to tell you, when um, I got cut and I got stabbed, okay. and it wasn't even so much the cutting <laughs> and the stabbing, which was profound to me, but see, like, when things happen in my life, Rich, I try to wonder why it happened. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm in the in the hospital and um I'm like shit, why the fuck? The way it went down it was crazy. It's like I'm coming out the bathroom in the yard. Which part was this? This was in Greenhaven again. Okay. And um <clears throat> it's like where I'm going in the yard, it's easier for me to go this way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But something told me to go this way. Literally. This is simple human intuition, whatever you want to call it. But I disregarded that. I said, you know what? Let me go this way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And dudes lined me up. I got hit up. It was crazy. And um, I said to myself, the first thing that I said to myself is, I knew I should have went left. Why the mm. fuck did I go right? I told myself. Literally, this is the first thing I told myself, Rich. And so why was this so profound and impactful in my life? Because I learned to listen to my fucking gut. Simple shit. <laughs> <laughs> listen to yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, small scale, large scale, that was impactful in my life. That was something. That was a lesson that I leave to learn. You know, it was bigger than the cut end, which was super petty. You know what I'm saying? Um, but ultimately, that's the lesson that I got from that, bro. That was a situation where really I learned the lesson that is going to carry for the rest of my life. Whether I'm Listen to your gut. Listen to my gut. I was going to say self. whether I'm incarcerated or not, but there's no more being incarcerated. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's something that, you know. Because listening to your gut, you know how many times you're dealing with, you, you could be dealing with somebody and you dealing with a dude and he pulls some, uh, some minor snake, mm -hmm. some minor snake shit. And you say, you know what, that's my man, I'm going to let it slide. And later on down the line, he pulls some major fuck shit. Now you're saying, the first thing you say, I knew I shouldn't. So for me, that was impactful. No, absolutely. Listen to myself. Absolutely, man. So let me ask you, like, right? Because I've been around you for a minute to know mm -hmm. that, like, your growth is crazy. Like I said, what you've come home and, like, what you've done, like, the way you think, your mind, right? Like, like, like you said, like, you like to consider yourself an intellectual. You're definitely an intellectual, right? And you a go get it, though. Because some people just keep things in theory. You theorize, and then you execute. Bring it to fruition. You bring it to fruition. You theorize, and then you execute. You bring it to fruition, right? So that's because I don't have time to waste. We done lost. Mm -hmm. We done lost enough time. Mm -hmm. So that's to go straight. Time. Go get it. Yeah, I mean, if the plan is already mapped out, you know what I'm saying? Which we didn't have enough time. You didn't have enough time to formulate your plan, and so have I. There's no time to waste. And really, with my life coming home from prison, man, I mean, shit, Rich, I had to spend over $10,000 just to get my license back. Mm. <laughs> but I knew there's something basic that I need. I want to start my life from scratch. I need my license. How many dudes ride around? No way. <laughs> CL500, yo, I ain't got no license. With no license. You got to start from scratch. got to start from the bottom and build up. Absolutely. So, I, I want to ask you about something, right? Because I want to just get into, like, the mental... And like certain things that's needed to change certain strengths, like so, like I like like although like you you so sharp, right? Like you cool, you the coolest dude in the world. I know you a serious dude also. Like like you serious even when you was up north, like you move like a soldier. Huh? Like you see what I'm saying? But, but that, that was a defense mechanism. But but let me ask you a question mentally, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, you got stabbed. Like you went through that. Like now, like you on the other end. Like like I don't I don't. I don't I, we all done been through. If you give it, you got to take it, right? Right, so, yeah. What was that like for you mentally, though? Mentally. Getting stabbed. Just having that experience, being, being, being on the bad end of the stick for a particular time, right? We got egos. We got egos. And you know what? Considering everything that I've done with my hands, stabbed in the hip, 
cut on the face, I'm okay with that. Hmm. I knew like, okay, this is what I got. Okay. Alright. I'll hold that down. Along with the eight years, okay, listen, I took it wasn't just in my mind, that eight year sentence wasn't just for the shooting. It was for everything. Mm. AP, you gotta wake up. <laughs> you gotta wake up. It gotta stop. Listen, I never listen, I told you I got arrested for robbery. I told you I got arrested for an attempted murder. I never been arrested for any drugs. But I came home and I said, I'm not even gonna fuck with that. <laughs> because that's the sickness. Mm. That's a sickness, bro. If I mm. say, come up, you know, okay, I can get it like this. That's like somebody getting locked up for a robbery and they come home and say, you know, I'm going to sell drugs now because I got to switch it up. Mm -hmm. You playing with poison. What's poison are you, are you playing with? Pick it. You got to step outside of the poison. So this is where my bread and butter. Mm. So how, how does somebody, well, you know what? We're going to test that on the next clip. We want to talk about that growth. How does somebody step outside of that poison, right? How does somebody create a gifted styles barbershop? How does somebody take those steps to become the person that we envision as ourselves? Like, and I, I also want to touch on, I see you got them two chains in your neck. I want to touch on those, because I know that, you know, just from real, I know that's something real powerful. But we gonna, we gonna, we gonna touch it on the next segment. Shorty said she love you, shorty know how to pretend She just tryna survive, you a mean